Now, so far in this tutorial series, we've been using Synadia Cloud as a system that we want to connect to. But maybe you're running your own NAT system inside of your own cloud or at the edge, and you want to be able to manage that inside of the Synadia Cloud dashboard. Well, you could do that by creating your own system or even importing your own system into Synadia Cloud. And this is a really nice feature because you get to use all of the features that I just highlighted and more by being able to utilize connecting your NAT system into um, the broad broader Synedia Cloud dashboard. So to do this, we're going to go all the way back to our team over here to Code Gangsta. And uh, as I showed before, we automatically have the NGS system, but we can add any custom systems that we want here. Whether this is an existing system or one that you're spinning up, um, you can also you know, add any of those as you wish. So I'm gonna go ahead and add system, and I'm going to say create system because I'm gonna start a brand new system, which is getting me up and running really, really quickly. So I'm going to give this system a name. In this case, I'm going to be running an at server off of my local Mac. So I'm just going to call this Jeremy's Mac. And I'm going to keep the URL as localhost4222 because you know my services are also just going to connect to that. And optionally, I can configure a Jetstream domain for this system if I wanted to, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and click save, keep that blank. Okay, so it's going to now take me to a screen where I can uh, essentially just copy and paste many of these things, um, but it's going to give me multiple options for how I want to run my NAT server. So whether I'm using binary, Docker, or Kubernetes, in my case, I'm just going to be running a NAT server on my computer, so I'm going to keep this as binary. But I'm going to go ahead and follow the steps. I'm going to copy um, this file to the clipboard because I'm going to be saving it as a configuration. So sim simply, I you know create this configuration file, and then I run our NAT server, um, and then we'll move on to the next step. So let's go to my terminal, and I'm just going to create a nats.conf file. Okay, and now that I've pasted that in, I'm just going to go ahead and close that off and run nats server with my configuration file here, nats.conf. And that's going to be running a server that uh, our system um, inside of Synedia Cloud is going to have knowledge of, which is great. So let's go back over to Synedia Cloud and move on to the next step. So there's a fork in the road here. Um, and the, the thing we gotta kind of know about our NAT system is whether or not we can have it publicly accessible. So Synedia Cloud can connect to a NAT system in two ways. It can connect directly to the NAT system. So if that uh, NAT server is you know, easily available via public URL, uh, it can connect to it directly and start, you know, uh, managing it um, in various ways. And this is a really, really easy path. But um, I'm not actually tunneling my NAT server from my Mac. So there's no way for Synedia Cloud as a cloud platform to really get at the service that I, or the NAT server that I just ran. So what I'm going to need to do is use a technology called Synedia Private Link. And this is just another um, binary that you just run alongside of your NAT server. And it essentially tunnels all of the traffic from your NAT server to Synedia Cloud and creates that private link between the two. Um, which is great. So uh, I need to download private link, which I already have downloaded and it's inside of my directory, but you can go to GitHub releases and download it and deploy it alongside your NAT server. Um, and then I can simply just copy this, um, copy this command and run it. And it should create a link between my cluster and Synedia Cloud. So let's go ahead and do that. And now, my NAT server is connected to Synedia Cloud, so I can simply go to the overview and check it out. Okay, so we have a cluster with one node. If I was running multiple nodes, this would show up as a really nice kind of connection graph, which is which is really nice. But I can click on this server and get all this info on it. Um, I really don't like this name, so I should change that in the server config at some point. But you could see that we know it's running you know, 2.11 dev, which I have on my Mac. Um, and we already are starting to send some messages around, which is really cool. I can even get like things like CPU mess, uh, usage and memory usage um, for this particular server, which is great. Um, now included with the uh, with kind of the system settings, we also have things like analytics that we collect on a per um, server basis, which is really really nice as well. Um, we can look at connections uh, as a kind of server or cluster wide view, um, and I can filter and sort by all of those things. Um, and I can also go in and manage accounts for uh, that particular system. So um, in just 
a few minutes here, I set up an entire NAT system on my Mac and I'm now managing it via Synadia Cloud, which is just really, really nice. Uh, makes it really convenient to do things like add accounts and add users um, without having to deal with things like NSC. So um, go ahead and check this out. This is a fairly new feature, so we're, we're currently beta testing it. But um, if you want to go ahead and check this out, we get all of the features that we got from Synadia Cloud, but with a custom remote system. So um, go ahead and have a fun play with this and I'll see you in the next one.